In the first video on the scout drilling at Sanken, we introduced the concept that we think that we're dealing with an iron oxide copper gold system. And that's really important because these systems generally have gold with the copper. They tend to be big. And thirdly, they tend to be clustered in an area. So if you've got one, you've got to look for a couple of others. This lava is completely flooded with the red hematite mineral. And in fact, it's got magnetite with it as, as well. This rock is the same lava. It just hasn't got as much red hematite, but it's got lots of magnetite in it uh, as well. And we can use these two minerals to tell us more or less where we are in the IOCG system, because generally the magnetite rich rock generally forms at a deeper level than the hematite rich rock. So the hematite would form a sort of halo in a big scale. We're talking about maybe a kilometer or two across here. The hematite would generally be above this rock. But typical of iron oxide copper gold systems, very often these uh, minerals are overprinted. Here you can see the hematite flooding in and just replacing what was originally just a, a, a magnetite rich rock. In parallel with the iron rich rocks telling us more or less where we are in the system, we can use a, a completely different set of minerals. These are the so-called silicate minerals. And the key one in here is plagioclase, these little white laths. Um, they show that this rock has been flooded with a sodium rich fluid. And the sodium alteration forms generally towards the bottom and the outer edge of an iron oxide copper gold system. As one gets more towards the center of the system, the feldspars become more potassic. So instead of being the little laths, which are, which are sodic, they become more squarish in cross section. And that shows that this is probably a microcline feldspar, and it shows that it's got more potassium in it than these that are sodium dominated. So we're starting to see potassium coming into the system. And the other mineral that's showing us that there is potassium in this system is this black mineral that's in the matrix. It scratches relatively easily. It's a mica called secondary biotite. And that is showing us again that we're in, in this rock, we've got a much bigger potassium uh, signature than we have in this rock. So this rock should be closer to the mineralization. If we, if we use this uh, magnetic pencil as the mineralized zone, we would generally expect these rocks to be arranged on a sort of kilometer, a couple of kilometer basis from the outskirts of the mineralization being the hematite zone then going through the more magnetic uh, area with the magnetite and the potassium minerals towards the center of the system. And right in the center of the system, we'll have the copper and, and the gold. Mainly, uh, the copper will be in, in sulfide minerals, chalcopyrite, bornite, and, and some native copper. In this potassic rock, this dark rock, we're starting to see copper minerals. In boreholes one and two, we're seeing chalcopyrite, a little bit of chalcopyrite in, in this material. And then in holes four and five, we're seeing more chalcopyrite. And we're also seeing native copper, pure copper, always with this uh, potassic uh, set of minerals in, in the dark magnetic rock. What does this mean for our exploration program going forward? We know that we've got a vector to the north between holes one and two in Senken two and holes four and five in Senken three, almost two kilometers to, to the north. So we know that we've got to keep going north. And we've also got a vector towards the east because hole five is more interesting than hole four. It's got more iron in it and it's also got more copper in it. So using those vectors, we now bring in the geophysics. We're ready to fly the mobile MT program, a heliborne program that will pick up the conductivity 
of a sulfide core of these systems and the combination of that geophysics with what we're seeing in the boreholes and all the mineral uh, zonation that we're seeing, that allows us to prioritize that a conductive zone that makes sense with the minerals that we're seeing up in the north would be a much higher priority target than a conductive zone somewhere else. And in geophysics, you always end up with lots of targets, but this scout drilling has helped us to know what to expect and which of those conductive zones will be the priority targets going forward to home in on the core of the system.